talking to the rollers. between you and me. You talk about it, I do it. You will know that your ass is mine and that's the bottom line. Just go, go. Welcome to the East Side, Dave and Son. What's so and so? WrestleMania! WrestleMania! Come on, John! WrestleMania! 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 What's so? Got ya. I got ya. Uh, I fooled you and I tricked you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's the East Side Dave and Son Wrestling Show. And it's our WrestleMania special. My name is Davey Mack. You might know me as East Side Dave, the greatest who's ever done this. With me, as always, the second greatest, maybe even the third or fourth or fifth greatest. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Put them together for Stanley Mack. The baby face of baby faces. And uh, we got a lot to talk about, but it is our WrestleMania special spectacular review. And we're excited. We're going to look at the card. We're doing it a little bit early. We always do it, you know, either the day of WrestleMania or the day before WrestleMania. But Stanley Mack is going to WrestleMania on night one. And that's going to be pretty awesome. And so we just didn't have, we don't have the time to do it on the day of WrestleMania. So we're going to give it to you. We're going to give it to you a little bit early, but that's fantastic. Because now you can, you can uh, re-listen and re-listen. Or you could save this for the kickoff show, maybe. Because let's be honest, the kickoff show, I mean, I, I used to really enjoy the kickoff show in recent years. I feel like it's become less and less of a big deal. I don't know what it is. So... You could pretend that me and Stanley are your kickoff show in any event. Happy WrestleMania to you. Come on, baby. Well, I got to tell you, Stanley, before we get into the WWE, let's hit a couple of other wrestling leagues. One that is doing fantastically. One that is not. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it's not just about WrestleMania. No, 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 no! And that's because on April 13th, Nutley, New Jersey, the IWF, Independent Wrestling Federation, based out of the Garden State, the IWF, when legends rise, wrestling event, it's Nutley, New Jersey, 7.30 p.m. Get your tickets at CampIWF.com. Tickets, CampIWF.com. Warning, nearly sold out. I'm not kidding. I'm not being hyperbolic. I'm not being Tony Khan. I'm not trying to be a wrestling promoter. This is what I was told. They had to add 25 more tickets. So just if you want the tickets, you want to go, CampIWF.com. And why is this a big deal? I'm going to tell you why it's a big deal. Because yours truly, Eastside Dave McDonald, will be in attendance. Of course I am. I'm New Jersey's greatest manager. And everyone knows it. And now I can back it up. And that's because one of my men... Okay, the All-American, Robert Ott Atkins, is now the IWF American Champion. Let me repeat that. Champion, that's right. The East Side Empire, that's the name of my stable. The East Side Empire, 
What we do is breed champions. Secretariat, Tiger Woods, LeBron James all came through the East Side Empire. That's why they're champions. Tom Brady spent a little time with the East Side Empire. That's why he's a champion. What I do is I take people who want it, people with great athletic skill and who want it, and I make them champions. And no, we might not play by the rules or believe in sportsmanship or etiquette of any kind for that matter. What we believe in is championships. So I'm going to have my man, the IWF American champion, Robert Atkins taking on live wire Charles Gaston. What do you think about that? You like that, Stanley Mac? Big math. That's not all. The master of chaos, Kevin Knight. A guy who's been running his mouth for years in my direction is going to take on one of my most prized possessions. I mean, wrestlers. First class Justin Adams is going to take down Kevin Knight in a grudge match. A one fall, 30 minute time limit grudge match, Stanley Mack. <coughs> and then finally, for the IWF Heavyweight Championship, my uh, buddy Robert Atkins, his twin brother, who's equally as sensational as Robert, Brian Atkins, will take on the IWF Heavyweight Champion, Dark Oracle Sage, in a sanctioned heavyweight championship match. And after I do that, I'm not going to have one, but two members of the East Side Empire who will be champs. And a third, really, after Justin Adams beats Kevin Knight, Justin Adams is going to have a moral and mental championship. So it all takes place on April 13th in Nutley, New Jersey. It's IWF. When legends rise, baby. Get your tickets at CampIWF.com. Davey Mack is going to be there in attendance, and I am going to run rampant. And yet again, the East Side Empire will emerge victorious. (laughs) Oh, it's so good to be a champion. It's simply good to be better than everyone else at Nunley, New Jersey. I can tell you that much. It's, It's just good to be a higher class of person. Classier. More successful. That's me. Unlike a lot of the stooges in Nutley, New Jersey. So you want to see a handsome, good-looking person who's simply better than everyone else in Nutley, New Jersey, make sure you show up to IWF When Legends Rise, April 13th. CampIWF.com for tickets. Now... That's number one. Number two, before we get into the WrestleMania, A-E-W. Oh, boy. Where do I start? Uh, Stanley Mack, I'm sorry to take up uh, that, but that was a very important message that I had to deliver to the Eastside Davidson wrestling fans. They need to be aware of all of the success that I've had in the IWF and all of the future success that I intend on having. I got to ask you a question, though. We're moving on from IWF into AEW now. Thoughts and opinions? I mean, I don't really watch. Like, I watch every single wall on SmackDown. You don't watch it all. Yeah. Let's just be honest. But I, but I, but you've, I'll, you've left AEW. You're, you're, yeah. you are done. Yeah. But I, but I'll choose wall on SmackDown over the wood ceiling. Okay. So <laughs> let me say this. So you are watching right now Raw. You're watching SmackDown. Yesterday we had March Madness and the Yankees playing the Houston Astros. I know I was watching the Yankee game. I'm not going to even lie. I was watching the Yankee game on the TV And then March Madness on my phone. And then I said, I'll watch SmackDown at like, you know, I wake up 8 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. I'll I'll watch that. But not Stanley Mac. With the Yankees and March Madness and the Knicks playing great, you chose 
SmackDown. And when's the and do you ever watch Dynamite, Collision, or Rampage? No, anymore? no, ever. No. Tony Khan in AEW. You have chased off WWE fans, and here's the deal: I was I don't know how I was somehow sticking with AEW, and I will be honest. Lately, I am now putting on Dynamite turning it on mute and putting on podcasts that I like, that I prefer. Like Cornette. Uh, like Jim Cornette yeah. or not even just wrestling podcasts. You know, it could be this, the Charles Barkley sports podcast or something. I'm just, it's such an annoying product right now. Here's my issue with AEW. Honestly, right now, it's Tony Khan, it's AEW wrestlers, and it really, most and foremost, is the hardcore, weird, young bucks, AEW fans. They are literally killing their company. And I'll tell you why. You've chased off Stanley Mack. He's a 14-year-old teenager who's literally watched wrestling his entire life since the age of five. Like me, he was invested in AEW from day one. We were watching day one from 2019. Here is the number one issue as I see it right now with AEW fans. Bros, it is not 2019 anymore. It's 2024. AEW fans are frozen in time. Number one, they think it's 2019 because they think it's still a WWE. It's a type of WWE that existed under Vince McMahon. It's not like that anymore. You are literally hearing every single wrestler be like, the locker room is amazing. Everyone's happy. Everyone gets feedback. We're allowed to be more natural with our promos. We love it. And yet AEW will, will, will talk about WWE like Vince is still running the show, like it's 2020 era, 2019 era WWE where New Day is throwing tomatoes at people, and it's really lame. It's not! WWE is the hip show. It's the cool show. Meanwhile, they think it's 2019 still with AEW in that they're the young, fresh, cool, underdog wrestling company. And they're not. They're five years. That's half a decade into their tenure at this point. They're not fresh. They're not the underdog anymore. They're not the new, cool new kids. Now they're lame and tired. And they talk about wrestling like it is 2019. I have to wonder if these people have a calendar. They consistently discuss and talk about that. Well, you can't go over there. It's soulless. It's soulless. No, it's not. WWE does not appear to be soulless. In 2024, it appears to be the best run wrestling organization in the world. Meanwhile, your wrestling organization is terrible. You just got Sasha Banks. And in the third episode of Sasha Banks, they went under 800,000 people. The difference maker, the game changer, Sasha Banks, Edge, Okada, none of them matter. Tony Khan gave you everything you need to know about Tony Khan when he repeatedly said in any type of interview, Quote, I think wrestling fans just want to see good wrestling matches. Quote, unquote. That is his philosophy. It's why he's ruined Brian Danielson's career because Brian Danielson, in addition to getting a concussion every two weeks, has one random match after another. So no one cares about Brian Danielson, one of the greatest talents ever. No one cares. I don't care. You know how much I love Brian Danielson? I don't care at all. Because it's a video game mentality. It's like Street Fighter. Uh, I'm going to be Blanca. Then let's just choose some random guy to be uh, player number two. And they don't understand this. And then, then they're, uh, they're, they're straight up condescending. Calling everyone who likes the WWE E-drones. Hey, you stupid idiots. 
the biggest pops in your company are all ex-WWE people, like CM Punk, right? Like Sasha Banks. So, on one hand, all they do is e-drone, e-drone. But on the other hand, it's, oh, we gotta get this AE, we gotta get this WWE star. And when we get this WWE star, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a game changer. It's crazy. I saw an AEW fan. This is, this is, this shows you how insane they've gone. I saw an AEW fan on Twitter blame WWE fans for the bad AEW ratings. I mean, let's just be honest. The horrific AEW ratings and nightmarish AEW houses where they're only getting 2,500, 3,000 people. And the AEW fan blamed WWE fans saying, how the WWE fans, how the E-drones can continue to support that soulless corporation and not support this product is beyond me. We tried! That's the point! You are losing WWE fans in droves. AEW is so stupid, they never realized most of their fans were crossovers. AEW only fans make up a very small percentage. The rest of the fans are people like myself and Stanley who are WWE fans who wanted to check out another product in 2019 because the WWE was terrible. And we were saying that right here on this podcast and saying how awful Vince McMahon creative is. And we said that in 2020, 2021 as well. But once they fired Vince, got him out, Triple H took over, and they got Cody and Punk back, the WWE has never looked back. Sorry. Times change. In wrestling, if you don't understand that, you're going to be dead. Thoughts and opinions, Stanley Mac. I know. I'm just going on a rant today. But what do you want me to say? It's WrestleMania, uh, our WrestleMania episode, and I'm just hyped up, okay? And I apologize. Give, give us some two cents. I need a sip of water. Um, yeah, I think that, like, Mercedes was a bust. A <sighs> bust. I mean, they haven't really... I think, like, it doesn't matter, though. Like, see, the point is, is you can get a big name, but Tony Khan can't book. So, at the same time, just because you sign a big star, if the guy can't book, that means nothing, you know? That's a great point. I mean, I do know. You buy these stars, don't use them like action figures. Don't use them like, you know, video game guys, like it's a Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter. He really, though, does believe that, and that is why you're not going to see AEW change. We have heard Tony say repeatedly, I think... uh, Wrestling fans just want to see good wrestling matches. That's all he says time and time again. So that's what he believes. When someone reveals themselves to you, believe them. He's revealed. He just he just thinks guys with names and matches. He also has no comprehension that the New Japan guys, we, we don't know who 90% of these people are. So the quote-unquote dream matches are not dream matches for the majority of wrestling fans, stupid. But yes, your Young Bucks, Hangman Page, Jungle Boy, cultists, they know who the 18th best guy is in New Japan. So they, they'll think it's a Brian Danielson dream match because they've heard of him. The problem with all those Young Bucks fans and the Young Bucks themselves and the AEW fans who have this type of outlook, you've put yourselves above everyone else. You have literally put yourselves above the rest of the wrestling audience. And people like Stanley and myself are now feeling like, you know what, screw you guys. But- you know what, Ar? You want to call us e-drones all the time? Fine. But- so I'm just warning everyone... Who listens to the Eastside David Sun Wrestling Show? While I'm still going to be paying attention to some of the things that happen in AEW, I can't promise I'll be watching every dynamite. By the way, this is no 
like disrespect to our truth or anything. I'm not saying it like that, but like our truth. But uh, what I'm saying is like new is a new Japan guy. I bet I bet some of them are like the art truth from New Japan, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that they're calling because the American audience doesn't know who, you know? That's, yeah. That's probably so. I know. All right. So I said what I had to say. Let's do a little WrestleMania. First of all, let's discuss the Monday Night Raw that we just saw, which is being considered to be one of the best Monday Night Raws that we've seen at least in the 21st century. One of the best Monday Night Raw episodes we've seen in probably 15, 20 years. From beginning to end, it was sensational. CM Punk and Drew McIntyre have got it going on. They put together a wonderful sequence, a wonderful segment. Drew's been unbelievable. Right now, Drew is just on fire. Punk is always brilliant. So I cannot wait for Punk to see what's going to happen. Now, Seth came out. Punk, they decided on a commentary spot for Punk during the match. Stanley Mack. Did you like that decision? Did you want him to be the guest referee? I kind of wanted guest referee, but... You did? It felt like the fans were chanting guest ref. Because guest ref's, I think, more fun, you know? Is it? Ways. Yeah. I don't know. I th- He's such a great talker. I almost feel like... Put him on commentary. If he wants to attack Drew at the end, he can still just, you know, take off the headphones and attack him. I think that... For me, I actually do prefer commentary because you get to hear Punk. And we all know he's a great talker. So, you know, guest ref. Uh, I sort of like this. I'm, 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 I am a fan of this. Plus, this always feels more like sports, like what they would do in boxing or UFC when someone's like a potentially, you know, a uh, big time contender. They might put him in the commentary booth and watch like the uh, the main fight, and then that guy's like the third ranked, you know, contender, and maybe he's there and he gets the next fight. You see what I'm saying? So there's a sports element to it. So I'm happy about that. What do you think though? The other big thing that everyone's talking about is The Rock attacking Cody at the end. Have we even done a podcast since Rock? Did we do Chamber? Have we? Have we? I, yeah, we did Elimination Chamber. I mean, because that was like 4 a.m. I don't know. I don't even know anymore. Oh, yeah. We did a uh, review, I think. Yeah, we did Elimination Chamber review. Wasn't that what we did? I don't know. Um, What did you think? And are we looking too much into the truck in the background that had Cena's face on it and Austin's face By on it? By the way, the reason why I know is because it also had Twitch Stratus and Cena's not getting involved. So... So you don't think, you <laughs> think it was that. just a coincidence? Yeah. Because if you look, there was also Trish Stratus, which is why it's not that. Now the rumor is that Stone Cold, though, and Cena will be involved in WrestleMania. Is there a chance that those guys, you know, I'm think. well, we'll get into our predictions. You know what? Let's just get into the predictions. Screw it. Let's have a little fun. But what did you think about that episode of Monday Night Raw? Unbelievable, Unbelievable. right? Unbelievable. With CM Punk. Uh, performing as brilliantly as he always does. With Drew McIntyre on fire. Hollywood Rock. Seth was back. The Rock is fantastic. Cody has been unbelievable. We all know Roman and Paul Heyman are great. Uh, this this thing, fantastic. What an episode. But also, like, the matches. That Ricochet J.D. McDonough match just was, like, fantastic. Next thing you know, you're going, Wow. I think that's the strategy. If I'm Triple H, you have three or four really good promos slash backstage slash, you know, talking segments. When you have a wrestling match, just let the guys, you know, tear down the house. Like, don't have a boring WWE TV match because you don't get a lot of matches. So if you only get three matches, right? for each episode, then allow those guys to say, you know what, 15 minutes of like a pay-per-view quality match. Go out there and do it. So I I really enjoyed that match. It was a great episode. Okay. Well, let's go to WrestleMania. Because since we're doing this a day early, we don't have all the matchups, ladies and gents. Don't blame me. All right? 
Blame Stanley. <laughs> so, we have, let's see. Okay, so we, they have a bunch of matches, but they don't know what night a bunch of these matches are. Let's so do the night to be determined first. I yeah, think. night to be determined. So we're going to do the night to be determined first. Let's just go in order. EO Sky, your WWE Women's Champion versus Bailey. And again, this is night to be determined. And then we'll give you, uh, they have just exactly the, the one match for uh, night one actually listed. And then they have the two matches for night two actually listed. And then the rest of these matches are to be announced. Uh, what night they're on. All right, Stanley, uh, EO Sky Bailey. Am I the only one who wants Bailey to come out with the Bailey buddies? <laughs> just Bailey buddies? Yeah. Well, she's a good guy right now. So, is that your pick? I got Bailey. Um, I'm with you. Bailey's going to win this. Nice WrestleMania moment. Sasha Banks really screwed up her career. Straight up. This is the exact wrong time for Sasha to be going to AEW. It really was. What The Rock is doing um, in the men's division, Sasha could be doing almost in the women's division. She's a movie, you know, she could be uh, lording the fact that she was in Star Wars. I mean, how many wrestlers can say they were in Star Wars for crying out loud? She could be like, I'm a movie star. I've come from Star Wars. I'm better than all these people. And Bailey could have beaten EO Sky. Sasha comes out. She raises Bailey's hand. Oh, they're back together. And then BAM! A clothesline. And we're back into Bailey Sasha feud. Anyway, you took the money, dummy. Um, next one. We'll stick with this uh, ladies' match as well, because this is what's uh, listed on the old Wikipedia. Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch for the women's world championship. Which is weird that I just I've said that twice. WWE women's champion. Is Io Sky. Yeah, the is. women's world champion is Rhea Ripley. It's like a thing out of Life of Brian for crying out loud. The People's Front or the People's Front of Judea. Okay, go ahead. In a night That's a reference. You have no idea what I'm talking about. I shouldn't have even said it out loud. Do you know who Monty Python even no. is? All right, just continue. In a night where oh, I think a lot of faces are going to win, I think Rhea Ripley's going to retain. Yeah, but she's barely a heel. I keep explaining this to you. I'm when you're extremely popular with the fans, you're a baby face. She's closer to Stone Cold Steve Austin, 1997. That's what she is right now. They, they should seriously think of making Rhea full-on baby face. Doesn't mean she has, she's going to le- lose her bad attitude. It just means, I mean, the, the people are going nuts for her. So, I, you know, I'm kind of weird to me. Uh, by the way, I didn't give you the prediction, so give me Bailey and give me, uh, give me, uh, wait, who'd you say? I had Bailey. No, but for Rhea Becky. Oh, for Rhea Becky, Rhea. I'm gonna go Becky, because you're a jerk. Next one for the Intercontinental Championship. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guther, the WWE Intercontinental Champion versus Sami Zayn. Um, not, I'm honestly, I think out of all... <laughs> Out of all of the... I love Gunther's song. I sing it all the time, and I stomp around. Out of all of the matches on WrestleMania, this is probably the match I'm actually the least excited for. What? Actually. And talking to the microphone, not my left ear. My left ear cannot record your voice. There's, I, there's no little... I got Gunther. Recording. You got Gunther? You're not excited for Gunther? He's fantastic. What? 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 Sami Zayn's great, too. Oh, this is this is gonna be a hidden uh, a show stealer. This is gonna be your question. The doggies didn't like it. They don't like me singing Gunther, or maybe they do. They're wagging their tails quite a bit. Um. Give me Gunther. I know Zami's a bigger star than Gable, but I do think that this should have been Gable. I, I do think that this should have been Gable. Who do you like? I said Gunther. Okay, I'm going Gunther too because I think that what's going to happen is following a loss, Sammy will go crazy. And we're going to get healed Sammy again. And I would strongly, I would suggest they do that. Get little what weirdo, paranoid, what's going on with me, you know, obsessed. 
self-esteem issue, Sami Zayn. That's what we like. And it makes perfect sense to do that right now. Next one. Six pack tag team ladder match for the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship. Could that be the longest name for a match of all time? I'm going to say that again. It says it's the six-pack six pack tag, tag team oh. ladder match for the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship. Can we make some of these matches, you know, can we pare it down a little bit? Is there any editors at the WWE? For goodness gracious. Great gosh, oh my. Anyway, Judgment Day versus DIY. Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa versus The Awesome Truth. Amazing our truth Versus The New Day, Kofi and Xavier. Versus A-Town, Down Under. Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. Versus New Catch Republic. Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate. Judgment Day, of course. Your champions, Finn Balor and Damian Priest, looking to retain. Climb the ladder, get the belts. You win, you retain. Will Balor and Priest be able to do it for Judgment Day? Will we get new champions? Stanley. Um, I got Awesome Truth. I you, think, you do? Yeah. <laughs> I think they're still going to win the titles. Ah, come on. Just say it in the microphone. I got Awesome Truth. Oh, you know what? With all due respect, you got Pete. Well, I tell you what, you got you got peanut butter for a brain. That's what you got. You might even have some jelly for a brain. I'll tell you, you mix them together, get a, get some, get a nice cold glass of milk for a brain. You got yourself lunch. But that would be good. Let me explain something to you, dummy. You know what's gonna happen here? I'm gonna tell you exactly what's gonna happen here. I don't know exactly what's happening. Prediction of all predictions right here. Oh this is why they listen to East Side Dave and Red Side Wrestling Show. Gonna say. Before the match, New Catch Republic and A Town Down Under are going to get into some kind of fight, and they're going to need two teams to join. We, we need two teams. Hardy Boys, Dudley Boys. Hardy Boys, Dudley Boys co- will return for this match. And which one wins? Yeah, <laughs> heard it here first. Uh, what's going to, uh, they're, they're going to, uh, uh, Bubba Ray and Jeff Hardy become a team. They decide <laughs> to, to switch it up. And then you got Devon like and that. Matt. I kind of like that, though. Yeah. So that's what's going to happen. I <laughs> do with what? Next one. <laughs> LA Knight versus AJ. You said it was going to win, though. Dudleys are going to win. AJ Styles versus L.A. Knight. Yeah. And I'm and I'm hearing that, um, by the way, AJ Styles tweeted that, that he's actually going to be getting a new theme song. Did you hear about that? No. Wait, who tweeted that? AJ. No. For WrestleMania? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. So, but I got L.A. Knight. You got L.A. Knight? All right, let's see. Uh, L.A. I got L.A. Knight, too. Give him the win. Give him the win. He's doing great. Jey Uso, Jimmy Uso, brothers, blood feud. What's going to happen? But, the bloodline. Rikishi's going to do something, right? Oh. <laughs> you got a little Rikishi yeah, prediction? Yeah, I think, I think he'll do something. What that is, I don't actually know. But I think he's doing something. Okay. Who do you like to win, then? Uh, Jay. Jey Uso? I'm going to go Jimmy. <laughs> a little controversy. For the United States Championship, it's Logan Paul versus Randy Orton versus Kevin Owens. Triple threat for the U.S. title. Logan Paul is your champion. Let's go. Uh, Logan Paul. Eight years Randy's waited for this. Logan Paul wins. Logan Paul? I'm going Randy. It'd be weird, but who cares? Give him a Just give him a championship. Six woman tag team champ uh, tag team match Bianca Belair, Naomi, and the brand new Jade Cargill versus Damn Control Dakota Kai, Asuka, and Kari Sane. Stanley. Realistically, Damage Control would have no chance. None whatsoever. Let's just go with Jade Cargill, Bianca, Bianca and Jade Naomi. And Naomi None, right. yeah. Jade, uh, Bianca. It's like looking at the Brothers of Destructions on the uh, against the other thing. I mean, they basically what I'm saying is, I mean, the height difference is just insane. Okay, now let's get 
to the matches that we know are going to be on night one and two. It's just one that we know for a fact. The bloodline, The Rock, Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth freaking Rollins for a tag team match. Here's the stipulation. If Rhodes and Rollins win, all members of the bloodline will be barred from ringside during the undisputed WWE Universal Championship match on night two. If Rock and Reigns win, the championship match on night two will be held under bloodline rules. Bloodline rules. Stanley Mac. Uh, <laughs> I got bloodline. Walking moment. Whoa! Anti-Cody, huh? I think that they're going to try to make this the stacks on Cody. Wow. I have to say I agree with you. I do. I think they're going to have a bloodline rule so that, you know, you can have a whole bunch of craziness. And that's how you bring out your Stone Colds and your Cena's possibly. So I think that is that is definitely going to have, uh, be happening. I think that they're going to be on Mania, but I don't think, I don't, it might not be in this match, right? doesn't necessarily need to be it doesn't need to be it doesn't it doesn't they, they could just make appearances but i i think there's a chance okay night two seth rollins versus drew mcintyre for the world heavyweight championship new title that they debuted this year seth rollins has been the world heavyweight champion it's a nice looking belt drew mcintyre has been the star of this rivalry and quite frankly literally since cm punk Arrived, Drew McIntyre's been a, a totally different guy. He's been fantastic. And we, I've been a Drew McIntyre fan for quite some time now. But this is the best version of Drew. He's been wonderful. Very funny. Very, very, very believable, too. Stanley, who do you like? Drew. Drew. I got Drew. I like Drew, too, and I think The Rock is going to figure something out. Not that The Rock is going to actually be there and do something, but he might have a little, he might have a buddy do something to Seth. Maybe a solo, maybe someone else. It, you don't think, though, that there's no way, like, like what if the work in us a little and it's going to be a triple threat between with Punk? No, I don't think, I, I doubt it. They, yeah, there, there, there's no way for that to happen. There's no stipulation. So I don't think there's going to be, uh, Oh, 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 for, for this match, for Rollins and McIntyre? Yeah. Um, he's not healthy. No, he's going to be doing the commentary. You know, it's a, he had a very serious injury. He's got he's to, you know, do a, you know, two or three more months. Should be good to go by SummerSlam. And then Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Let's go, Stanley. Uh, since I guess we're predicting. Biggest this, prediction. Think. Of the year, does Cody finally finish that story? Please, God, finish it. I got Cody. You I got think Cody? he's going to finish the story. He has to. Well, Stanley Mac, I am going to agree. Cody's definitely going to win. He has to win. Look, don't be AEW. Remember what? How, you know how AEW has screwed so many things up. One of the many, 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 many things that they screwed up, which almost is impossible, is to like get even AEW fans were getting annoyed with MJF because of that forever devil storyline. Just went on and on and on. fans eventually need a payoff. And if you don't give them that payoff, they A, start getting frustrated, and B, they can actually lose interest in the entire product. They can just say, you know what? I'm not into it anymore. Oh. This is a critical period. they got to give it to Cody. Don't expect us to have to be here for another year of Bloodline and Cody. Come on, man. Well, only a few more months from Hogan. <laughs> I know, we're only a few more months from Hogan. Who cares? It's not even the record. Bruno San Martino has the record. The thing doesn't make sense that, to me. It's like making a big deal that some baseball player would be third on the all-time home run list. In the modern day, in the WrestleMania era, no one cares about before the WrestleMania era. Well, it, records are records. Everyone knows the Bruno thing was seven years. Everyone knows that. Sorry. Unless Roman is champ for seven years, that's the record. Sorry. 
Anyway. Stanley Mac, you're going to have a good time at WrestleMania. You excited? Yeah. You excited to be going down to Philadelphia? Homeland yeah. of the Eagles. We're Giants fans in this household. You're going to be okay with that? Yeah. It's a good city, though. Ben Franklin. You know him? He's from there. Give me uh, one thing that Ben Franklin did. Let's see if they literally teach you anything in school. One thing. Come on. I don't know. One thing. Ben Franklin. One like of the founding... Okay. Into the Did microphone. Like the not my ear. Oh, I know. That was John Adams. Well, he uh, was a part of that. He was? He didn't He didn't author the, the entire draft, but he was definitely a part of the Declaration of Independence. I'll give that to you. What about the guy with the electricity and the key? Farmer's Almanac? What about that? Any of these things? <laughs> Listen. It's okay. I have to go. You have to go. We have to go. We've got to watch some WrestleMania. We want every single member of the East Side Dave and Son Wrestling Show to have a wonderful WrestleMania. We love you. Thank you for subscribing. Make sure you spread the word. Share it with your friends, family, and neighbors. And enjoy WrestleMania 40, baby. Let's rock and roll. And remember, IWF, Davey Max going to be in attendance for IWF When Legends Rise, April 13th, Nothing, New Jersey. Get tickets at camp. I'm WF.com. Have a great WrestleMania.